Well, for my money, he's got all the facial characteristics of a criminal. You know, the, the narrow chin and the eyes close together and slack jaw with a prominent overbite. You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. Hey, Norman, would you come in here and sit in for me for Comedy Parenting Radio? I got got to go clean the oven. I I might be better able to clean the oven. No, just just do do a show for me. Come up with a topic real quick. How about pecking? So, in your form of parenting... The proper form of parody. Uh, what do you teach them in the way of packing? You can't talk about packing on comedy parenting radio. Well, maybe you can. Hang on a second. Here, let me have it. Um, are you talking about, you know, heat and that kind of stuff? No, I'm talking about Projectiles? backpacking, remember? Oh, backpacking, yeah, backpacking. backpacking. My yeah. form of backpacking. Yeah. I used to like the uh, external frame packs because I could carry a lot of stuff. Like, seriously, at one time when I was a ranger, I carried a wash tub out full of garbage. I mean, it's a wash tub. On a my, wash tub. A wash tub on my backpack. Why did you have a wash tub? Did you need to take a bath? <laughs> Rangers get really smelly in the backcountry. Well, that would explain it. But no, actually, I found a, a wash tub that someone else had brought into the wilderness. I don't know why they needed a wash tub. That's a, that's that I, we don't even want to guess. No, but anyway, I had to put on my backpack and carried out. So I had a, a external frame pack. I could carry a lot of weight on those. I hated it. Um, I could carry a lot of weight, but now my knees are killing me. And how's this? What does this have to do with parenting? By the way, you might need to pack your kids out of the wilderness in a wash tub. In a wash tub, you might need a wash tub. You always need a wash tub if you have children. That's what I've noticed. The little boogers are always <laughs> leaking out of somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they leak. But diapers have come a long way, by the way, since we regressed that. <laughs> I know. It's not even four minutes into the show and we've regressed to diaper talk already. Yeah. Well. Uh, Norman, uh, you've had your share of kids. And and what's the worst blowout you've ever seen on a diaper? Well, <laughs> actually, I was babysitting and, and this uh, little booger was stopped up for about four days before I got there. This is a true story. And then they went out for a fine dinner. I didn't have much of anything fine about that evening at all that I could recall. <laughs> That's they, what we they call probably, blowouts. They probably uh, uh, read the Tremors report or something like that from Boulder and knew it was about to erupt. Like, uh, Norm, come on over. we got to go to dinner. <laughs> that was the combat duty, pretty much. <laughs> Did you get hazard pay that night? Uh, I should have. <laughs> I should have. <laughs> you know... That's one thing they never talk about to uh, people who like, oh, I want to be a babysitter, you know, is really the hazards of being a babysitter. What's a, have you ever been a babysitter? No. no. No? But you've had a lot of babies. Seven. And you've sat on them sometimes? <laughs> yes, I've sat on them. You, sometimes you have to sit on them to hold them down while you're doing the diaper changes and whatnot, you know? Uh, as a matter of fact, I know people that say it takes two adults, you know, just to change the diaper. One to hold the hands, one to hold the you know, feed and the whole kind of thing there too, but it's kind of easy. But can you think of any other hazards maybe when, when people are babysitting? <clears throat> like uh, well dogs. shafts. What? Uh, well shafts. Yeah, well that's shafts. A good one. Yeah. And, and, uh, ignition systems. Can, <laughs> ignition you know, systems. like do those little gas um, burners on the stoves. Oh, so yeah. like a kid could uh, just turn on the propane and blow the house up. Yeah, that's always fun. <laughs> do you let, do you let them, have it on for a little while just to get a smell going and then go shut it off? Yeah, well, you can always test how badly it leaks with a match. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. Try it, no. at your, try it at your neighbor's home. <laughs> neighbor's home, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Don't try good. anything we say at home. Try, <laughs> try it at the neighbor's home. It's <laughs> good insurance first. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Huh? So uh, blowouts on diapers and little hazards and whatnot. Uh, what else do little kids do? Like, I don't know, toddlers, what do they do? Like, when they're walking, do they ever fall down and smack their face on anything? You know, are you? Are we talking smack now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I know you, you, you're you married to a nurse. You've probably heard of things. Tree Sock Press sells the books that stay on your shelves. 
When you want books that your guests pick up and read and can't put down, make sure it's one of Tree Sock Press's comedy books. Get a copy of her new book, Dad, the Tooth Fairy Didn't Come, and your kids will want you to read it over and over and over until you pull what little hair you have left out. When you pitch your books out into the gutter, you'll feel complete guilt if it's a Tree Sock Press book. Get your Tree Sock Press book wherever lousy comedy books are sold. Tree Sock. It stays on your shelf. Ranger Station. Hi, um, I want to report a bear sighting. Location. My front door. It was Smokey Bear. My husband was burning leaves in the yard. He just came inside for a second. Never leave a fire unattended. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. Smokey said that too. We go way back. I knew him when he was just a cub. How cute. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Brought to you by Smokey Bear, the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Everyone stay calm, we are taking over... There's a touch of madness around here. Well, well, there's a few. Uh, actually, I can't even say it on the air, actually, come to think of it. <laughs> Every time I have a guest on, they're like, I can't say that on the air. It'll go from G to whatever rating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so. But, you know, I never actually watched any of my births, uh, the births of my children. The, I, I couldn't. I I would duck below the level of the table. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, there's nothing special about watching the birth of your child, really. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you know, they're out there, then they're there. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's kind of like. One time, though, when we we were, um, Nancy was in labor, and we have the this uh, TENS unit. It, it, oh, wait, basically... we, can, we can't give out names on the air. Just say, when Hansy was in labor. No, you can say Nancy. Oh, when Hansy no, was say, in labor. Yeah. <laughs> you can say Nancy. So my wife was in labor. <laughs> we had this little electric thing. Is that You'd stick it on the back, like little... It was sort of like what you would do t- during torture, you know, yeah. like waterboarding, oh, yeah. and you would use this. Waterboarding and babies, it's all the same thing. Same thing. Same thing. And, and, you'd, and <clears throat> you'd have this electric current. It was kind of like a, a taser. And, and so you turn it up when the contraction is going on. So I got awfully excited about it, and I turned it way on up, and she screamed a lot. And, uh, and I tried to say, well... That wasn't so bad, was it? And so uh, she said, oh, really? Not so bad. Feel this. So she bit me. (laughs) So your wife bit you in labor. She bit me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But that was... Did you get your shots? That was before she hit me, though. Oh. (laughs) So that's why you're normally below the table when it's about time. Yeah. When it... Yep. Yeah. When it gets close... Try to leave. You never figured out to wear the mouth guard and all that kind of stuff, did you? Like a lot of the doc, um, men will do when they. No, you really should, though. It's yeah. a good idea. So, so you men out there, if you're about to have a, a kid and your wife's going into labor, make sure you have your mouth guards and, and other appropriate gear protection. for protection. Yeah. yeah. Protection like that. Yeah. Cool. Chain mail. Okay. In case you get bitten. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Comedy Parenting Radio. We'll be back in just a minute. Ranger Station. Yeah, hi. I'd like to report a bear sighting in the forest. Uh-huh. One second I'm having a smoke. Next thing I know, I'm face-to-face with Smokey Bear. Wow. And he told me it only takes one spark to start a wildfire. Did you know nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans? I had no idea. That's why Smokey's famous and you're not. If you see someone in danger of starting a wildfire, step in and make a difference. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires. Made 
Back at uh, Comedy Parenting Radio, we've got Norman in the studio. Uh, he he's the stand-in host. He's actually sitting in the. That's a nice chair you got there. Of Thank mine. you. And it's, I, why I do you stand call it stand-in? <laughs> anyway, we're talking about kids and uh, bicycles. I got to tell I got to tell you, Norman. We just got rid of. I'm not joking. We got rid of about ten bicycles at our place. Well, you had twenty kids. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> When you have so many kids, people give you bicycles. <laughs> you know how people drop babies off in the door? People would just drop off bicycles. No, knowing that we needed a bike for all of our kids and, and the bikes didn't always work or you no. salvage parts. And now you got this like <laughs> some people, you know, in the South, they have junk cars and washing machines. We had junk bicycles just in every shed and garage and, and all over the place. So bicycles are tough. Did you become an expert at repairing bicycles? No, not at all. <laughs> That's why you got rid of them. Yes, I did. we got rid of them because I didn't even know how to pump up the tires. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I actually assembled a bicycle once. It, it was about 3 in the morning, Christmas Eve. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I've heard about people putting bikes together before Christmas, but you really? Can I, yeah. can I shake your hand? Oh, yeah. Nice. There it is. Oh, thank you. Give me f okay. five or so. Boom. Anyway, tell me about the bike uh, three in the morning. <clears throat> well, uh, in the summer, in the summer, uh, my daughter tried it out, and she was having a really hard time. We couldn't figure out why she couldn't get it. I mean, she's actually quite coordinated. And then one of my brothers-in-law noticed that I had put the uh, front, um, what do you call it, handlebars on backwards. <laughs> It affected the performance. It did. So that's why your kids never learned to ride bikes till they were 16. <laughs> really? <laughs> okay. This has been Comedy Parenting Radio with Jerry and my stand-in guest, Norman. Thanks for coming in from the Aspen uh, area there, Norman. Uh, tune in next week when we never know what we're doing next week, do we? We hardly know what we're doing in an hour. I, that comes with age, by the way. I know. Hey, I, did, know. I heard that your parents were good friends, or at least they knew my parents. Uh, let me try that a different way. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. <laughs> so, so the way I heard it is that you were born in 1957, September 16. September 16th. When were you born? Well, actually, the same day. September 16th. Yeah. Do you know what's famous about September 16th? Uh, the Cherokee Strip. Well, that part I didn't know. <laughs> but so the voyage of discovery, which was like two and a half years long. Yeah. Kind of miserable at times. Yeah. So, uh, Meriwether Lewis wrote in his diary, September 16th, this is the most miserable day of my whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> and we were born that day. We were born that day, in that very year, and that's why he was so miserable. The, you've been listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. Tune in next week. Love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're listening to Comedy Parenting Radio. I know nothing. Nothing. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir.